Micah here from beautiful Southport, North Carolina. And I don't live here, but I'm visiting here. That is... Birds everywhere. Hey guys, Monica here from beautiful Southport, North Carolina. I don't live here, but I want to someday. As you can see, it is amazing. Anyway, I just wanted to film a quick intro and tell you that in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how I made this top that I'm wearing. It's a super comfortable top and pretty easy to make, and the coolest part is the back, the keyhole closure. So let me get started showing you how to sew it, and let's get to the sewing room. I wish my sewing room was right here with this view. Any lightweight stretch fabric should work for this project, but for this top I used a yard of a fabric called Onion Skin Knit I got on clearance from Fabric.com. It was my first time working with it and it's basically really sheer, stretches quite a bit, and was pretty easy to work with. I used an old shirt and its sleeve I cut off as a pattern for today's top, and I actually show you how to cut a shirt and do a pattern in my last video, so make sure to check that out because it's really convenient. If you left one of the sleeves on like I did, just fold the other sleeve out of the way and then fold the shirt in half. Fold over your knit fabric and lay the shirt over the folded fabric with the folds of both the shirt and fabric lining up and with the fabric stretching perpendicular to the fold. Pin into place and cut around the neck and armhole, leaving about a half inch seam allowance. I'm really sorry for the camera focusing issues, but I cut the sides about 2 inches wider to create a looser fitting t-shirt. Cut the bottom 3 to 4 inches longer for hemming later on. Now you'll have one bodice piece cut, so cut out a second one using the first as a template. If you want a lower neckline, fold one bodice piece in half, and it's easiest to place pins just above where you want the neckline to fall to keep the fabric together, then cut as desired. The next step is to cut the keyhole, so grab the other bodice piece, fold it in half, then we'll cut a circle just below the back neckline. So pin the half circle shape, about the size of a Bath & Body Works 3 wick candle, and cut out the hole. You can cut half of it out, then fold the other half over and continue cutting to make sure it's even. The fabric should be slightly disconnected at the top, just like mine is. To cut a sleeve, fold your fabric over, again so the stretch is perpendicular to the fold. Grab your sleeve template, and again, check out my last video to learn all about how to cut a sleeve pattern. Fold it in half, then fold the long sleeve up to your desired length, adding one and a half inches to the bottom for hemming. Lay the pattern on the fabric with the folds matching, pin into place, and cut, adding a half inch for seams. I cut the sides of the sleeve about an inch wider because I wanted a looser fitting sleeve. Then cut out a second sleeve. I know it seems out of order, but before we sew anything together, it's easiest to hem the bottom of each bodice and sleeves for a cool decorative detail. Fold the bottom edge up one and a half inches once, then again, then pin into place. Continue doing this along the whole edge. Make sure you're folding outward so this fold will be visible from the outside of the shirt as a stylish detail. Then top stitch as close to the top edge as possible to secure the hem. I'm sorry that I don't have any actual sewing machine footage like I usually do because my camcorder broke and I lost that footage, but you can see the top stitching here, and I sewed it with a stretch stitch so it'll still stretch. Here I've hemmed both pieces the same way. Hem each of the sleeves by folding them up twice three quarters of an inch at a time and stitch into place the same way as with the bodice. Lay the front and back bodices together with the folded hems facing and pin and sew the shoulders with a ballpoint needle and stretch or zigzag stitch. Fold each sleeve over to find the top center point of the curve and mark that center with a pin. Now we're not attaching the sleeves in the traditional set-in method where you sew the sides of the shirt then insert the sleeves, but instead using another common method where you attach the top of the sleeves before sewing everything else. To do this, lay your bodice pieces out, and as a reference, this is the neck hole and then this is the keyhole. Head on over to one of the outside edges of the shoulder seams, flip the shirt so that the correct finished side of the seam is facing up, then lay the sleeve so that the center point marked by a pin is right on top of the seam. Pin it into place. Continue pinning the entire curved edge of the armhole into place. Right up here I discovered I accidentally pinned the sleeve facing the wrong way, so I had to repin it all. Even though it's hard to see on this dark sheer fabric, make sure that when you're pinning, the sleeve's folded hem is facing down toward the rest of the shirt so that when you flip it over you can see that cool detail since you want to see your work when you wear it. Sew along the curve with a stretch or zigzag stitch, and when you flip the sleeve right side out, all the seams will face inward and the folded hem will face outward. Now that both sleeves are attached, lay your top so that the right sides are facing up to the sky. Then fold your sleeve in half, right sides together, and pin into place where the seams which will become the armpit meet. 
Pin along the rest of the arm and side, making sure that the top stitching on the hems line up for a neat appearance. Sew along the whole side and sleeve with a stretcher zigzag stitch, which I've done here. Do the same on the other side, too. Now you'll just need some thin, 1 quarter inch double fold bias tape to finish the neckline and keyhole. Determine about how much bias tape you'll need to fit around the keyhole and cut a little extra to be safe. Open up the bias tape and sandwich the keyhole fabric between the two layers, then pin into place. Continue pinning around the entire circle and have a little patience here. Be careful not to stretch the knit fabric because you want it to lay right when you're done. Switch to a standard needle and regular straight stitch, then slowly top stitch along the bias tape, removing the pins as you go. Adding about 7 inches excess hanging off the end, begin sandwiching the bias tape around the neckline, starting at one side of the now finished keyhole. The new bias tape should cover the raw edge of the keyhole's bias tape. Pin around the whole neckline, and once you get to the other end, cut the bias tape with 7 inches hanging off, and these will be our ties. Top stitch around the entire piece of bias tape, starting at the end of one tie and stopping at the end of the other. As with any time you sew, always back stitch at the start and stop. You're officially done with this beautiful blouse. Just close the back keyhole with a bow and you've got an awesome new top with lots of stylish details. So enjoy the shirt and be proud of another creation. Thanks for watching my videos and please, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed already. I really enjoy reading your comments. I'll see you in the next video. Do you need it with the other? Oh, what was it? I don't know, it was like something with a giant jump either that or somebody threw something. Hey guys, Monica here coming from beautiful Southport, North Carolina. Yeah.